Hello and welcome to another video by www.electricalpereview.com. In this video, we're going to find out where the square root of 3 comes from and the 30 degree phase shift when dealing with delta phase and delta line currents. So let's begin. Over here on our left, we've got our balanced delta source, which means our line currents are going to be entering our three windings here. So let's map it out. We know this is going to be our line current IA entering the delta, our line current IB entering the delta, and our line current IC also entering the delta. Over here we've got our delta phase current between A and B circulating in the, de in the delta. So this phase current is going to be IAB. Down here, we've got our line current from B to C as our phase current circulating in this side of the delta as I, B, C. And then this phase current right here, we're just going to draw it on the other side for room, from C down here to A up here. This is going to be our phase current I, C, A circulating in the delta. So, if we use Kirchhoff's current laws, we know that if we solve for IA, all of the current entering this node and all of the current leaving this node have got to be equal. So on one side of the equation, we've got all of our currents entering, which is IA plus ICA. And we've got all of the currents leaving, which is IAB. We can solve for IA as IAB minus ICA. Now if we arbitrarily assign our IAB as having a magnitude I with a phase angle of zero, we can graph this as our IA to B vector here And we know that if IAB equals magnitude I phase angle zero, then our IBC has got to equal magnitude I with the phase angle of IAB minus 120. And since that's zero, it's going to come out to negative 120 degrees. So if this is IAB, we automatically know that IBC is going to be down here. At negative 120, and we know that our ICA vector is going to be same magnitude I, this time our phase of AB plus 120, and since this is already zero, it's simply going to be plus 120 degrees. So then up top here we've got our ICA vector. With the same magnitude as the other three, this time displaced a positive 120 degrees from IAB. So we use this information to plug up here and solve. We've got IA is going to equal IAB, which we set as phase angle of zero for reference. So we've got I phase angle zero minus ICA, which we found to be a positive displacement of 120 degrees since it's balanced. So minus I plus 120 degrees. Now, there's two ways to do this. We can do the math and convert each of these to rectangular. We can then subtract them and then convert back to polar or we can do it the easy way and set our current magnitude equal to 1. So we rewrite our equation as IA equals 1 phase angle 0 minus 1 phase angle 120 degrees. Now it's a lot easier to do our complex math if we're using 1 instead of a variable I. 
So when we carry this out, going to rectangular, then back to polar, or if we've got a calculator that can handle subtracting two polar numbers, we plug it in and we end up with IA equals square root 3 at a phase angle of minus 30. Now if you remember, we said that I equals 1. So really, we can rewrite the top as IA equals square root 3 times 1, which doesn't change it, at a phase angle of negative 30. And then once more, we can rewrite this as IA really equals square root 3 times the magnitude of our IAB, IBC, and ICA currents displaced negative 30 degrees. Now, let's find the rest of our line currents phase angles. If we found IA to equal square root 3 I minus 30 degrees, then this is a balanced positive ABC sequence, then that means IB will have the same magnitude as IA, but this time it's going to be at a phase angle of IA minus 120 degrees. So negative 30 minus 120 degrees gives us negative 150. And IC is going to also have the same magnitude at a phase angle of IA phase angle plus 120 degrees. So negative 30 plus 120 degrees gives us 90. So let's graph this up top to compare. Here's our original IAB vector. IA is going to be displaced negative 30 degrees, and it's going to be 1.73 times IAB. So that looks something like this. IA minus 30 degrees. IB is going to be minus... 150, so that's going to be up top here, IB. This angle right here is going to be 100, negative 150, but this angle right here is also going to be negative 30, just like it is over here. So we can check that. If we say we know this is 150 minus 120, should be negative 30 degrees. Yep, so this guy right here is 30. And the last IC is going to be 90 degrees. So he's going to be up here somewhere. IC equals square root 3. I phase angle of 90 degrees. So if you'll notice, each line current lags its phase current by 30 degrees. IA lags IAB by 30 and is 1.73 times the magnitude. IB lags IBC by negative 30 and is 1.73 times the magnitude of IBC. And IC up here at 90 degrees lags ICA by 30 degrees and is 1.73 times the magnitude of ICA. So there you have it. This is where the square root 3 comes from and the 30 degree phase shift when dealing with our delta balanced source for our delta phase and delta line currents. So give it a go. For some practice, I recommend instead of how up here we solved for IA, go ahead and solve for IB and IC separately using the different phase currents and use our trick down here of setting the magnitude of our phase current as one and then solving by converting each of the polar vectors to rectangular, subtracting their real and imaginary components and then converting that back to polar or like we did down here, if you have a calculator that's capable of subtracting two polar vectors, you can take a shortcut, uh, but I recommend solving the rest of those and verifying that for a balanced three-phase ABC sequence, you end up with the same phase diagram up here.
Okay, that's it for this video. For more examples and to visit our premium review course, come see us at www.electricalpereview.com.